The COVID vaccine has 666 written all over it, and why that doesn't matter according to Revelation. In an article published last week on The Lab, COVID-19 and the Mark of the Beast, I claim that the Mark of the Beast, 666, is most likely not a physical or visible mark, Revelation 13 verse 16. The biggest objection I received from readers had to do with this very point. How could the mark be non-physical and invisible if having the mark was what allowed people to buy or sell things? Revelation 13 verse 17? Wouldn't the mark need to be visible in order to do that? Furthermore, isn't there enough evidence that the vaccine is the number of the beast? including a bill currently before the House of Representatives 666 and the very letters Corona themselves. One these are good questions, and I think a response would be helpful. But first, we need to start from square one and do some background work. 666, the number of the beast. Years ago, I remember hearing how some had taken President Reagan to be the end times beast. The reasoning went like this. When you take his full name, Ronald Wilson Reagan, you can see how each name contains exactly six letters. No wave of the wand or hat trick was needed to see how that dreaded, mysterious number was embedded in the president's name. To say this is silly is an understatement. How odd that John wrote in such a way that only a person who was familiar with both the English language and modern American politics could rightly interpret his message. In order to avoid embarrassing interpretations like this one and similar ones that seem to prevail in 2020, we must deal with the text's original context. Again, you can't simply jump to modern application without dealing with the historical context. Scholars often associate the number of the beast with Nero Caesar. There's actually good reason for doing so. For instance, we know from Suetonius that many people were at the time toying with the numerical values of Nero's name, Nero 39. This practice, known as gematria, took a letter of the alphabet and assigned it an equivalent number. So, for example, in the case of Greek, the first letter alpha would be given the number 1. The second letter beta would be understood as 2, and so on. When you take Nero's name, Neron Kaisar, and transliterate it into Hebrew, the result is the number of the beast. 666.10. So, is the vaccine the 666 mark of the beast? Growing up, I never heard any of this stuff. I reckon that most people in my evangelical tradition haven't either. But without all the background information, people are being tossed to and fro by endless speculations and fears. Sadly, some people, many of them sincere Christians, are terrified that they will be forced to take the mark of the beast, no, it's not Bill Gates, in the near future. Could it be the vaccine? Is it a computer chip? What if I get tricked into taking it? With these questions in mind, let me offer a few remarks about modern-day applications. First, the historical data does not permit us to think the mark of the beast is something you can accidentally take. It's a mark of loyalty and worship, which requires full cognitive and heartfelt awareness of what you are doing, otherwise it's not worship. If there is some future mark imposed on people by some nefarious person, then to take that mark. You'll know exactly what you are doing, namely, cursing Christ and pledging devotion to his enemy. Scripture and other ancient writings from that time period point us in this direction and, quite frankly, 
There isn't much leeway on this point, although you can debate me in the comments if you wish. Second, be careful and wise with how you apply these texts. Let me give an example. Right now, in my own country, and it's been this way for a long time, a person might find it very tricky and difficult to operate within our local economies without a government-issued social security number. Let me be as clear as I possibly can about this. There is no biblical reason to think that accepting government-mandated social security numbers is the equivalent of taking the mark of the beast. Whatever the current issue may be, vaccines, SSN, chip implants, SIM cards, etc., we need to be careful about confusing our personal and or political convictions with the meaning of a biblical text. Some public policy ideas are good, some are terrible. But either way, unless they require you to forsake your faith in Jesus as the exclusive object of your worship, they have no relation to the mark of the beast. Again, given what we know about the historical context of these biblical texts, the mark of the beast must be tied back into worship if it is to be applied properly. To take all of these things into account allows a much-needed moratorium on all the pointless anxiety and fear-mongering. The message of Revelation beckons us away from angst and worry. It bids us to gaze upon the slain Lamb, to worship Him with loyalty, devotion, and commitment. Let's make Christ our focus, not endless speculations that, at the end of the day, have very little to do with the message of Revelation. Buying and Selling What, then, can we conclude about that buy-sell passage? When it comes to the beast, his mark, and the worship of the beast's image, the historical data seems to be pointing us in one direction. It's simply a reference to how the imperial cult impacted one's participation in the local economy. If the mark is an allusion to the emperor's claim to divinity, symbolized on Roman coins, statues, images, etc., then a person in the first century could genuinely be said to take the mark of the beast by participating in the economy at the expense of their faith in Jesus. That last part is key. In other words, at certain times and in certain locations in the empire, the only way to be a good standing citizen would have been to simply curse Christ and worship Caesar's image, see again Pliny, letters. Again, this would have been a particular problem for Christians in Asia Minor. They would often find it impossible to make a living and worship Christ exclusively. Of course, a person could respond by saying, yes, but the text says the mark is placed on the right hand or the forehead. Does this not therefore necessarily imply a physical mark? The answer is no. Craig Keener offers helpful thoughts on this point. He notes how the mark of the beast in Revelation 13 acts as a parallel to the seal that is placed on the foreheads of Christians in Revelation 7 verses 3 to 4. This seal actually has an Old Testament basis, namely, in Ezekiel 9, where a mark was said to have been placed on the foreheads of God's people, Ezekiel 9 verses 1 to 6. Keener also points to another Jewish text of the period, known as the Psalms of Solomon. That describes a mark placed on evil people. He observes how the two marks in Ezekiel and the Psalms of Solomon are clearly symbolic. Visible only to God and his angels, not to people, 14, and so it is quite reasonable to conclude that the mark of the beast, like the seal of the lamb, is also symbolic. Thank you for watching.